hi and today i want to take you through the process that i usually take my clients from the moment i meet them to the moment we are done with the eia project the first thing that we do of course is to meet yes we meet we know each other we talk that is how you know if you are willing to work with this client or you're not willing to work with this client. If you're watching this and you're an expert, it is not all clients who are worth you expertise. Some clients, you just don't need to work with them. And I'm very serious. So you, you meet with your, ex, with your client, you talk and negotiate. Let them ne tell you what they want to do with the project. Let them let you see the plans of the project, if they have the plans, all the designs, the site layout of the project. Let them give you a history of what they want to do, why they want to do it, when they thought about this project. Just talk and have a brief, a deep brief on the project. And the next thing that I want to do before we even agree if I will continue with the job in most cases is site visit. I visit the site first. And this is also to identify what is on site. In some cases you go to site and the way you see, you just advise the client on the way forward. Probably in most cases, if it's a place they'll never ever ever get a license like an expert you need to be the person advising your client in some cases i have told the ex the client don't bother you will not get an emma license this is not a place where you'll be required to do a building you cannot be allowed by the law to do a house here don't bother and of course now that happens before i even start the job be we are still in the in the very very initial stages of getting to start our business i go what is my role in this project what is their role in this process we also agree on how much they're supposed to pay me how they're supposed to pay me is it in cash is it in a, in a check is it to my account is it in installments one-time payment we discuss all these and then of course there's contracts to sign and all these documents that we have invoicing and all this after i have seen the site and after they have told me and i've seen the documents that i'll need to see already so after that now is when now i go back and sit and research on the area you need to do the baseline information of the area go and research the hydrological reports what they talk about the specific area the geological reports of the area look at the weather conditions the weather the weather information the climatic information that you have of the area do all that research that needs to be done that is specific to the site and after you've done all that remember you went to site so there is an assessment you could be able to assess some few things you could be able to assess how the area is how the the the, the, the site is the neighborhood the rivers and all this so now you're doing a research or because you already know the site then after that is when now i go back to site to do a public participation public participation of course now this is usually in agreement sometimes it comes before or after the third step so it is in agreement with the client with the area administration on when people could be available or which is the most suitable day for public participation this is where we go right now because of covid we only visit homesteads you go and find people where they are they fill you questionnaires they give you oral insights all information you're able to get from the public the neighboring public get to know their contacts how far they live from the area if it were not for covid19 there are meetings to be held remember the government has allowed a number of people right now i don't know 15 who can attend a meeting so call these meetings public barazas speak let the chief hear you let the assistant chief assist you the village elders let them assist you listen minute down all comments that have been taken down so that is public participation so that is generally to visit the people on site the neighborhood 
and hear what they have to say about the proposed project get all the information you need from the public and now then after that that is the fifth step i guess now is to sit down and do the report this is usually the most difficult part of it all it is now to sit and now do all the report you did a, a baseline information research now you have you have the the public participation opinions now then do a report of everything now that is where you come in as an expert to add on to what you have observed what you have heard from people what the client has told you what the local the the, the the stakeholders have told you about the specific project now you sit down and all that do all that in a report and after the report is done now sit again with the client this could be either a physical sitting where you're meeting directly could be through phone or even email let the client know how far you have gone how what are the outcomes of your assessment and this of course is before you you know you submit it to NEMA discuss it with the client any changes might that might come up rectify them there make sure to check on with all the documents that you have that you need make sure they are there and of course now if you are in uh, in agreement with the client between you the report and the client then that is when you submit the report to NEMA and after you have submitted the report to NEMA now technically technically your work as an expert is done I said technically because you are paid to do the assessment which you have done and reported to NEMA but now of course for most in most cases you have to follow up for the client but of course now this is usually as a customer service you know the after sale service you know so you 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 are the one who knows how the office operates you are the one who knows the officers and all these things so you're in a better position to follow up the report on behalf of the client so yes so after that now the report is supposed to take either five five uh, days before approval it could take 14 days 21 to 28 days depending on what report it is some reports will even take three months depending on the issue depending on the complexity of the project and of course there are so many other factors to consider on how how quick or how slow the project takes or how long it takes before it is approved so of course now after i've submitted the report that is a sixth step then the seventh step is to follow up with the office to know the issues that have been raised to get to know if there are documents you need to to you know to take to the office or any issue that could have been that have been raised that requires clarification and all these things so then after a follow-up of course the next thing that happens is licensing so after this license then you that is the eighth step you take the license to the client if you are the expert who is doing this for the client make sure to have a copy of that license because most times you might find a client who lost their license and they might need you might come in to help them with a copy if you have one and uh make sure to document documentation is very important so then after the client you have served them with your license i think the deal is done from there so then you can follow them up for referrals or you can continue advising them i advise that you don't just let your client move on after they have gotten their 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 license you will need to assist them now in the implementation remember the project that i did was an or had a plan that i made inside there that has been approved by NEMA. There are conditions also that you have been given through the license. And these are supposed to be done or are supposed to be implemented in the process of the project. So you go ahead and construct or go ahead and get the other licenses and permits that you required. For example, the NCA and so on. After you've gotten them, after you started operating, there are some plan. There's a plan of how you're supposed to do these things. Follow up with the client to see that they are doing so. If it is, for example, say a mining or a crashing or a petrol station, after they are operational, they'll need to do an environmental impact, I mean an environmental audit, then follow up with the client. So those, that is basically how the process goes up and specifically for me, how I do it my way. It is different with the different clients and it is different with the different experts and it is, of course, it is customized 
to each and every client because every client's need is different and so that is generally all the steps not in any order some of them might have to interchange sometimes they are longer sometimes there there are a few steps that we do away with in the process but this is generally how i do an eia that is the process i follow all the steps that i follow when i'm doing an environmental impact assessment so let me know down in the comment section has somebody done for you an environmental impact assessment or an environmental audit did you did you feel like they took you through the process were you satisfied let me know down in the comment section any question you have down in the comment section or you can reach me out through my email which is in the description box my business number is in the description box so make sure to reach me out till next time keep safe and watch these videos